So a lot of people think camels spit their stomachs out their mouth to cool off. And I would love to freak y'all out and say it's true, but what it really is is an inflatable extension of the soft palate. You know that soft upper part in the back of your mouth? This flesh balloon is called a doula, and male camels spit them out to get a female's attention or to flex their dominance. This sand donkey will even add foam to it as a sign that they're ready for mating season, and they'll go into this thing called rut. And rut is when a male animal like a camel becomes a horny menace to society. Their testosterone skyrockets, they become much more aggressive, and they start doing the absolute most to get their willy wet. It's like their version of spring break. So if a he camel ever does this while looking at you, he either wants to fight you or... You better hope he just wants to fight you. If you wear green around this bird, it might try to have sex with you. Imagine if I just ended the video right there and didn't explain myself. This fat flightless parrot is a kakapo, and if it's not the most damn bad thing on the planet, it's definitely top 5. They're so rare that they're only found in New Zealand, and there's only like 200 of them left. So to get a date, the male kakapo will sit in a hole in the ground and make a loud booming call for 6-8 to eight hours a day, every day for about 4 months. But because they're so rare, he could put in all that work and still end up getting less action than a white crayon. Which is why this bird looks like it listens to Drake. It's like a guy swiping on anything with a pulse on Tinder and still ending up with no matches. And just like that guy, this bird is down horrendous. Because the kakapo will get so desperate that he'll try to mate with a bird from a different species, and somehow it gets worse than that. Sometimes they'll even hook up with a fallen branch or an extra curvy piece of driftwood because eventually they just stop giving a f Except, you know, to the driftwood. And that fact is why this is exactly what it looks like. Should have picked a different shirt, good buddy. And considering just how happy this parrot is and how this guy's just letting it happen, this is definitely not the first time. Moral of this video, if you were green in the jungles of New Zealand, the chances of flightless parrot CSI's the back of your head may be low, but nature won't allow it to be zero. If TikTok doesn't give a warning, I will. If you're squeamish in any way, this might not be the video for you, good buddy. Most of these sharks are blind, and it's all thanks to a parasite that scrapes its eyeballs until it causes permanent vision ending damage. That parasite is a crustacean called a copepod. It's kind of like getting an eyelash stuck in your eye, except it's alive, it feeds off of your cornea, and it's stuck there for life. But it's actually not that bad. Greenland sharks have a strong sense of smell, which is why they can survive getting Ray Charles. And to be fair, they don't really use their eyes for much anyway. As bad as it looks, and yet it does look bad. The parasite actually helps the shark out by basically serving as a fishing lure, which attracts fish that the shark would normally be too slow to catch. So even though the shark basically gets its eyes gouged out, it ends up better off because it has a better chance of catching more food. Also, some scientists believe this parasite might be bioluminescent, and if that's true, they glow in the dark, which attracts more food for the shark they're living off of. But when you choose someone's eyeballs to blindness and live on them rent-free, helping with groceries is the least you can do. I feel like in every video, there's at least one sentence that no other person has ever said, and that was definitely it. I'm just gonna get one thing out the way, please don't block me. This is what their mouth looks like, up to 300 needles to help keep fish in place, meaning like any toxic relationship, once it's attached, you're not getting away. So the biggest ones can grow to like six and a half feet long. But they're perfectly harmless, and even if they weren't, this satanic fleshlight usually lives hundreds if not thousands of feet below the surface. They were kind of the blueprint for sharks because frilled sharks have been around for about 80 million years. The times must have been different back then because this shark can be pregnant for three and a half years, and I have no idea why. They got their name because of the gill slits on their throat that some dude apparently decided looked like frills, I guess. Also, you've probably never seen one because they're built to live in the freezing depths of the ocean where the pressure would insta-kill you. Which means if you take them out and bring them to the surface, they would die almost instantly. Their favorite food's squid, so unless you're a cashier and neighbors with a pineapple, you have nothing to be afraid of. If anything, they should be afraid of us because sometimes they get caught in trawling nets and that's basically their series finale. This guy was recorded off the coast of Japan in 2007, but by the looks of it, I don't think he lived long after this video. Actually, not that bad, but therapy ain't cheap, so don't look them in the mouth. You ever just sit and wonder just what sloths are? Even if you didn't, I'm still making the video. Sloths are members of one of the weirdest families I've ever seen called Xenartha. And that family reunion includes sloths, anteaters, and armadillos. And one of the main things they have in common are those massive claws. Armadillos use them to dig for food. Anteaters use them to dig graves for jaguars. That wasn't even a joke. They've put jaguars in coffins. And sloths use them to hang from trees because that's the best they can do. Now the family they're in, Xenartha, they're most related to the afro Terror family. And their cookout includes aardvarks, elephants, shrews, and manatees. And no, I don't get it either. Which means, outside its own family, this crawling carpet's closest cousins are Dumbo and the Sea Potato. Once upon a time, sloths used to be as big as elephants. And Megatherium was brawlic enough to hand out fates to anyone who wanted it. But after years of terrible character development, they got demoted to a moss blanket with a face. So to answer the question that absolutely nobody asked, a sloth is just an unemployed tree armadillo and a hippie anteater. Animals you would not believe were real if cameras didn't exist. This right here, this is proof that nature just makes its own rules. It's called a maned wolf, but it's not a wolf or a fox, so it's not even a cross-dressing coyote, it's kinda just its own thing. Despite technically being a type of dog, half its diet looks like it came from vegan teacher's plate. To the point where they actually have a fruit named after it. Those long legs help them see over grass, and that's all they got. And speaking of grass, the maned wolf smells a lot like something that gets cops called at zoos, and that's not a joke, it actually happened. Also, YouTube what they sound like, nothing about them makes sense. Next are these guys. Sun Bear just looks like somebody in a bear costume after someone told him to act natural. I've never seen an animal look so awkward being itself. 
despite being related to like polar bears and stuff, the sun bear eats fruits and insects. As a rule of nature, if you eat insects for a living, you have to have a disrespectfully long tongue. They do not break that rule. I still can't get over this picture. This would probably scare me more than a grizzly. The sun bear just looks like it's constantly dealing with something that's way beyond our understanding. Last is the mola mola, also known as the sunfish. And it's only because I personally did not know they got this big. Sunfish can grow to 8 to 10 feet long, away 2,200 pounds. And because this overgrown water placement is blissfully unaware of the world around it, the only time they're a threat to our way of life is when they jump onto boats and put themselves and anyone under them on a shirt. Because when you're that big and that stupid, you're just a danger to everybody. So this is actually a barnacle goose, and they have by far the worst birthday of anybody. Because their parents build nests high up in the mountain cliffs where they can't get aborted by ops like the Arctic fox. But because birds have no morals, the parents don't actually feed the chicks when they hatch, and the only food is on the ground. Which means literally the day they're born, baby barnacle geese have to jump off a 400 foot cliff and pray they're still present tense by the time they hit the ground. Because if they don't jump, then they choose to starve. It's so bad that half the chicks that jump end up on a shirt by the end of the day. The only thing protecting them from becoming a feathery pack is a fluffy down coat that absorbs the shock of hitting the rocks from that high. Other than that, they yeet themselves off a cliff and hope for the best. To somehow make it even worse, the noise that the parent geese make ends up attracting the arctic fox that they are trying to get away from. These foxes will literally wait at the bottom of the cliffs for chicks to fall out the sky, meaning they can survive falling hundreds of feet just to get clapped by a fox. If they land too far from their parents, they can end up getting snatched by a raven. Moral of this video, they take baby showers way too literally. The famous Gorilla Grill. Bro finna dropped the nastiest mixtape the jungle's ever seen. Probably a diss track on his ex called Haram's Bay. That's all the jokes I had. So yeah, that mouthpiece is a result of their diet. Mountain gorillas live in the... Mountains. And they eat a lot of leaves, roots, bamboo shoots, and bark, but because they live so high up, they eat less fruits than other gorillas. Which means their diet is high in these things called tannins, and it's actually the same stuff that makes coffee taste bitter. And after years of eating the same way vegan teacher expects us to eat, it stains their teeth almost completely black. Sometimes it turns their tongues black too, all while giving them one hell of a smile. Moral of this video, your favorite rapper spends hundreds of thousands of dollars just for the same teeth Donkey Kong wakes up with. Yeah, it's real. It probably shouldn't be, but it's real. That is a Brahma chicken. The biggest ones can weigh nearly 20 pounds and stand at two and a half feet tall. They're originally from China, but they were developed in America in the 1800s. And even though it looks big enough to catch a fade with Peter Griffin, it's actually the feathers that make this roid rooster look bigger than it actually is. And it turns out these overgrown chickens are actually pretty calm and friendly around humans. It doesn't change the fact that I'm probably going to see this in hell. So you've probably heard of the world's happiest animal, the quokka. You've probably also heard that ridiculous rumor that they throw their children at predators in order to save themselves. Yeah, it's kind of true. No, they don't physically hot potato their babies at dingles, they don't have the arm strength. But if a mother quokka's being chased, as a final resort she'll purposely loosen the muscles in her pouch, causing her little bundle of joy to fall to the ground. The screaming, writhing joey quickly gets the predator's attention, allowing mother of the year to escape. But to be fair, other marsupials like kangaroos and wallabies will negotiate the lives of their children in order to make sure they get to keep theirs. Because by nature's logic, you can always make more babies, but you can't do that if you're not alive. So while mother quokkas don't actually throw their children, what they really do isn't a whole lot better.